blessed good afternoon to you, my dear sisters and brothers, on this beautiful afternoon here in the patio of the Parsonage in Aberdeen, New Jersey. And on my left, our wonderful African gray bird who might chime in now and again. But welcome. It's a joy to be with you as always. It's a joy because we are working our way through all of the Psalms one Wednesday at a time. There is an issue that I pose at the beginning of this video. There is something that the sacred poet of Psalm 114 did about his past that can help you as you look back over your life. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see how what he had done is something that you can do with the same faith and creativity that the sacred writer, as we hear Rafa chime in a bit. So let's pause for a moment and do our little orienting silent period of quiet so that we can orient ourselves to what's flowing in the rest of this song. So we take a nice deep breath here on this summer afternoon, relax and become still as we prepare to enter into this meditation on Psalm 14, 114. fire starter that opens up our initial view of this psalm is entitled The Radiating Presence. Crowds make a border of cheers in support of the runners in city marathons. In such a manner does the psalmist describe the hills and rivers skipping and dancing as rams and lambs and their joy as they witness the race of God's people to freedom in the Exodus. As you run the race and grow in holiness and perfection in the body of Christ, all creation cheers you along. Just as the earth is described in verse 7 as trembling in the presence of the Lord, so does the Spirit of Jesus within you command a power that radiates world about you. Humbly accept this power. It is not yours, but God's. Release this power in loving acts of prayer and service with a joy that cheers others along their race in its course in midweek and midsummer. Let's pray now. Psalm 114. And again, this is part of a group of Hallel Psalms. Uh, Psalm 113 to 118, and they're all around Passover time, and they celebrate with each of the beginning words with Alleluia. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a foreign people. Judah became his temple, and Israel became his domain. The sea beheld them and fled. The Jordan turned back on its course. The mountains leapt like rams, and the hills like yearling sheep. Why was it, see, that you fled, that you turned back, Jordan, on your course? O mountains that you leapt like rams, O hills like yearling sheep. Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, in the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool and flint into a spring of water.
This psalm has got to deal with the beauty and power of the Exodus. And for those who might be reading this psalm after the exile and the return to Jerusalem, they hearken back to what this must have meant for them and what it means for them in the exile period or post-exile period and what it could mean for us. There's a concept that I'd like to share with you called stepping stones. Many years ago, I attended what was called an in intensive journal keeping with Ira Progoff, who has since passed away. And one of the features of this journal was an exercise in called stepping stones. What he means by that are what were the key moments in your life that brought you to the present moment. And these aren't fixed. Whenever you do this exercise, the stepping stones might change. For example, as I recall, a key stepping stone for me is this photo of my brothers and myself when I was 12 years old. I'm the one at the bottom of the photo. We were down the shore and mom and dad wanted to make a beautiful family picture of their sons. So I remember that. I remember the tie I was wearing. I remember that moment. And I have it in our room and I go out the door or I exit our room and I see it. And I'm brought back to that moment as one of the stepping stones in my life, 67 years ago. There are others, of course, but the stepping stones, it's, it's a beautiful image because it's like the most primitive way in which we humans were able to get across a stream or a body of water that wasn't too deep, but we wanted to get across it. So they placed these stones, stepping stones, to make from one side to the other. So I ask you, what are your stepping stones that occur to you, not just at this moment, but later when you review this psalm and when you look back over your life, what were the key moments in your life that you're aware of right now that brought you to this present moment, which become the stepping stones to your future or a springboard to the next phase as you recall and gather up the points of your personal history. We let them move forward into a new future. So as I sit out here on this yard with our bird uh, and the other birds that are moving about our lawn, we're all, of, we're all in this together, that the yard is happy I'm here and I'm happy to be here. So it catches the vivacity of the living creation in the world in which creation is happy that I'm here and I'm happy that they are here. To use the, the wonderful images of that psalm where the hills are skipping like lambs, the joyful celebration of life that goes on. And when we really appreciate the gift of life that we've been given and let it bubble up from within us, then we're in a position of celebrating and transferring this beauty and this gift of life to others, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these Wednesday videos and the other videos that I prepare. There are moments where I can lift up from my experience and give it to you in the hopes that you might find something that's within it that would help you in your walk of life across the stepping stones of your own life. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you for being here, and I pray that you will find a benefit from this, and if you do, give us a like, a comment, share it with others, subscribe to the Matawai UMC channel on YouTube, so that the gift of the stepping stone of this particular video can make its way into other people's lives. God bless you. See you next week.